There we are. That should keep the bank off your back for a while. I don't know what to say. Well, you could start by assuring me what a good investment I've made. That it is. Daddy. Ah, yes, well, as your new partner, I have just one small request to make. And that would be? I should like my daughter to take an active role in the day-to-day -day running of the riding school. As a way to further her business skills. Shall we say executive, student, president? <laughs> So here he is, yeah. Winsong. Winsong the hero. He's beautiful. Beautiful. That's fantastic. Oh, he's great. Do you well, know who that is? No, but he's beautiful. <sighs> Not the horse, the guy. That's Ethan Lowell Jr. Who? His father was only the most famous racehorse trainer ever. What's he doing here? Training my new horse. He's yours? Daddy bought him. His name's Winsong. Winsong? But he's racing in the Bridgemont Cup on Saturday. A horse like that doesn't race. He wins. Maybe you'll see it on TV. We'll be in the winner's circle. If he's racing in the Bridgemont Cup, what's he doing here? Shouldn't he be at a racing stable? Daddy doesn't trust just anyone to look after him. And now that he's the owner around here... Part. Oh, no. Pine Hollow still belongs to the Regnery. Daddy appointed me executive student president. From now on, things are going to be different around here. No more tired old flea bags and cut rate ponies. From now on, Pine Hollow only accepts the best. I hear you're going to be more active around here, Veronica. It's always good to have an extra pair of hands. You can wash these. Winsong will need them for Saturday. <laughs> It's Veronica's horse? I don't get it. It's like the meaner she gets, the more good stuff happens to her. And don't forget the executive student president thing. Come on, what does that even mean? It's not like she has any real power. Four down, four to go. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm putting one of these in every stall. No more yelling from one end of the barn to the other. Need a stable hand? Just push the button. Did you ask Drobo or Mrs. Reg? Why? It's Daddy's money. He said I could put whatever I want on his account. So you're in charge of your dad's part of the stables? Exactly. I'm managing his investment. He doesn't have time to worry about running this place. Does that mean you can change the horse assignments? I can do whatever I want. Why? I'm tired of riding Bark. I want Prancer. <sighs> Consider it done. Cool. That. It was nowhere near his record time. It was still a very good gallop. We're not doing time trials, Mr. D'Angelo. He's just stretching his legs, getting used to his new surroundings. We haven't got time to coddle him. You promised me a winning horse. Then let me do my job. I wish you would. If I race him flat out every session, he'll have nothing left for Bridgemont. I'm not interested in excuses. I need results. I can see where Veronica gets it from. Oh, owners are the same the world over. Just make my prize position go faster. And the more money they've paid, the less patient they are. That's what I admire most about your dad, Ethan. He was a patient man. Mm, that's true. Though, he didn't start out a great trainer. It took him years to develop his talent. Even longer to train a winning horse. Did you know Ethan's dad, Mrs. Rake? We shared a common interest in horses. And barn dancers, I heard. Tell us more. No, that's quite enough, I think. We know nothing about you when you were young. Well, that's the way it shall remain. No! <laughs> you can't do that! 
I just did. Max is signed Prancer to me. Don't worry, you can ride far. <sighs> Veronica! Lisa, don't take it personally. I've given everyone a change. Put me on Jasper. I can't ride Comanche. They're advanced horses. And I think you're both ready for a challenge. You'll thank me for this. You can't do this. Hey. What's the problem? <sighs> Nothing to worry about. Drew assigns the school horses, not Veronica. You are so wrong. I am the executive student president, and that means when it comes to students, I'm in charge. Why don't you go muck out a stall or something and leave this to me? She's out of control. <sighs> Mr Lowell? Yeah. I just wanted to say I'm a huge fan. All those horses your dad trained. Eclipse, Sundancer, Moonlight's Desire. I watched all the races and... Good luck with Windsong. You're a racing fan? More like a horse fan. Yeah, me too. Can't believe Windsong's at Pine Hollow. Neither can I. Sorry, it's not what I meant. Pine Hollow is a great facility. It's just a bad idea to move a horse into a new stable days before a big race. Why did you? Now you have to ask Mr. D'Angelo that one. His horse. He probably misses his stable mates. Hard enough for any horse to be stuck in a new environment. Especially for a horse like Winsell. <laughs> See? He's already high strung. <laughs> like any good race horse, right? He's the best. If you need any help, I... Do you spend any time around racehorses? Yeah, I used to exercise them for David McLeod. Well, I could use some help. Really? Us horse fans have to stick together in this business. <laughs> She's totally out of control. It's like Veronica times ten. And I know why she did it. Because Christy wants to ride Prancer. He's more stressed out than we thought. He hasn't even touched his food. Putting Christy on Prancer is bad enough. What about Melanie on Comanche? Ashley on Jasper? Who's Daddy going to ride? You know what Drew should do? He should put Veronica on Buck or Dime. Poor Ethan. Everyone expects him to train winners like his dad. Now he's finally got the chance with Winsong and the D'Angelo's ruin it. The D'Angelo's? Exactly. That's what I've been saying. Winsong could be the next Secretariat, or Sundancer, or Farlap. Why am I talking to you? You've got racehorses on the brain. Oh, Mr. D'Angelo. I was looking for Drew. Yeah, he's in town. How can I help you? Oh, thanks. It's a Drew thing. I'll catch him later. Yeah, but wait, 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 wait. While you're here, what's, uh, what's this about? New tech for the school horses. Three new bridles and a saddle? Yeah. For school horses? Yeah. We don't buy tack for school horses. But the old tack was worn out. Well, let the students buy their own. We're running a business here, Red, not a charity. I understand that, Mr. D'Angelo, but the school horses belong to Pine Hollow. And half of Pine Hollow belongs to me. From now on, you don't sign for a single carrot without my approval. Got it? Are you sure you want to be bothered with all that small stuff? All that small stuff can add up to big stuff if you're not careful. OK. But you're right. I, I can't deal with everything. So when it comes to the students, you talk to my daughter, Veronica. A bit of licorice and ginseng to give you some energy. It's not a pet, Ethan. I realise that. I train racehorses for a living, remember? Yes, of course. I just want to see the animal live up to our great expectations of him. I haven't seen a good performance out of him since he got here. You will, on Saturday. Yeah. Spent a lot of money on this horse, you know? He's worth it. Yeah, and if he wins the Bridgemont Cup, then his price goes up. I'm doing everything I can to get him ready. You're so tired. Where's the fire, the energy? I was just about to try another herbal remedy and give him a leg massage. Well, use your flaky New Age concoctions. Just do what it takes to make him win, OK? I bet 
better get back to my chores. I wanted to talk to you, Stevie. What? Pine Hollow can no longer offer you free tuition in exchange for your chores. Well, duh. The tuition is not free. I do work in exchange. Well, we can't afford that arrangement any longer. I have a deal with the Regnerys. Nothing to do with you. Oh, really? If it weren't for my family, they would have lost everything. Stevie has to work here to pay for Belle's board. It's nothing personal, Stevie. It's business. You can't do that, Veronica. Stevie needs this job. The budget is very tight. We need more paying students. How can you afford to install intercoms if the money is so tight? We're going to tell Drew about this. I'll be informing Drew of my decision. Who left this bucket to you? Oh, that's Starlight's. I was just going to put it in this. Do you have any idea how important Winsong's diet is? He can't eat that. I'm sorry. Winsong is hypersensitive. You may have just cost him the race. She didn't mean to. This is a valuable racehorse, not one of your school ponies. You stay away from him. But you said I could help. Carol, this isn't a game. No one comes near this horse except for me and Mr. D'Angelo. It wasn't your fault. He totally overreacted. Did he? But what if one song actually does get sick from Starlight's food? It was an accident, Carol. You didn't feed it to him on purpose. Ethan's just under a lot of pressure. A few mouthfuls of Starlight's food are not going to make a huge difference. You don't get it. His diet is so important. One change could throw him off. Wait a minute. What? He wasn't eating anything before. Maybe Starlight's food tastes better. Or maybe he's feeling better. See? And I just wrecked it. I have to go check on him. He can't. She's right. You should chill for a while. But I have to go see if he's okay. What if they catch you? I'll go. What? Nobody told me to stay away from Winsong. <sighs> wow, you were one thirsty horse. Keep your hair on, I'll get you some more. What are you doing? <sighs> Don't do that, you scared me. Stevie, Mr. D'Angelo and Ethan are on the warpath. No one is supposed to go near Winsong except them. Yeah, okay, I know. But I was just walking past and noticed that his water bucket was empty. I just filled it. Well, he drank it. And was asking me for a refill, so his I... His feed's gone too. Really? So does that mean he's okay? I mean, Carol didn't wreck his diet or anything. You can tell Carol that Winsong's fine. He's eating, drinking, and no, she didn't wreck him. Great. Thanks. That's more like it. Looks pretty good, doesn't he? Good. He's like a different horse. His red told me you were worried. What's wrong? I don't know. Just how can a horse change so much so suddenly? Well, he's just got his appetite back. Horses react to change like people. I know. I thought that at first, when he wasn't eating. Now he's pigging out. And then he wasn't drinking. Now he's practically like a camel. Don't you worry about Winsong. My guess is that he's finally settled in. Decided that Pine Hollow isn't such a bad place after all. I guess you're right. Like I'm an expert on racehorses anyway. <laughs> what are you two doing? Didn't you read the memo? Memo? No one touches anything without asking me first. We were just taking our saddles out. Why? To tack up our horses. Max and Drew may have forced you to work, but we D'Angelo's don't believe that paying students should have to do manual labour. But I want to tack up my own horse. How are we supposed to learn otherwise? You're here to learn how to ride, not to become stable hands. Because no one would want to become a stable hand, would they? <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I meant. <laughs> but anyway, from now on, students ride and stable hands work. Got it? 
So basically, you're throwing the Regnery's whole philosophy out the window. What philosophy? I'm sure Drew will be very happy to share it with you. Veronica. A number of people have come to me with complaints about the way you've been treating them. Who? That's not important. The point is that you can't tell Red... What did he tell you? ...or any of the staff what to do. You're not their boss. Well, I'm the executive student president. Yes. And that doesn't give you the right to change long-term arrangements between the stables and the pupils. But we can't afford that arrangement with Stevie. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> well, I was just trying to cut costs. If you want to spend your dad's money on intercoms, I can't stop you. OK? But these are still my stables, and you won't bully my staff and my students. These are the horse assignments for Friday's lesson. Any changes are made by me. You pull another stunt like that last one and you can find yourself another instructor. Are we clear? I take my responsibilities very seriously, but it seems I'm the only one. Drew speaks to me as if I'm like, like everybody else around the place. Are you listening? Yeah, I agree with you. They should have more respect. What did your dad say? Well, this you really won't believe. First, he tells me he's not prepared to defend my position with Drew. Oh. Then, then, he tells me I'm spending too much money. Unbelievable. Oh, all he cares about is this stupid horse race. It's like his whole future depends on it. Oh, imagine. Oh, I gotta go. You want a ride? No, my mum's picking me up. See you later. Bye. Heavy it is, the head that wears the crown. Like you'd know. <laughs> what? What is it that you really want, Veronica? You see, knowing as I do, the real you, I often get confused when I see you behaving like a horse's... Excuse me? I saved Pine Hollow. If my father hadn't have piled all that money into the place, there'd be a for sale sign over the entrance right now. That was a fine thing you did for them. A generous gift. A very generous gift. But a real gift doesn't demand any payment now, does it? Hmm? I've, uh... <laughs> I've thought of what it is I want, Scooter. Oh? I'll have another strawberry shake, thanks. And uh, don't hold back on the malt. Don't ever change, Veronica. <laughs> easy, Winston, easy. You should take the swelling down in your leg. <laughs> Ethan? Carol. I just wanted to say sorry. I should have been more careful with Starlight's food. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry I freaked out on you. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. I know. A horse like Winsong only comes along once in a trainer's career. And only if he's really lucky. You really love him, don't you? Yeah, we understand each other. Veronica's dad isn't exactly a horse lover, is he? <laughs> he's a businessman. He's just doing his job. He looks restless. Rare in the go. Are those hives? Uh, yeah, just, just nerves. They look sore and itchy. Carol, relax. It's fine. I'm glad you're not a racehorse, Starlight. So much pressure, everybody depending on you to win. But you'd never give up your crunchies, would you? <laughs> I thought we were alone. Ethan? It's wrong. It 
It's okay. It's gonna be all right. It's just me. What's wrong? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. But there's something wrong with Winsong. You probably just startled him. You don't understand. So explain to me why you're in Winsong's store when you know you're supposed to leave him alone. What's going on? I heard a noise and I heard someone leave the stall. It was probably just Mr. D'Angelo. I saw him leaving Pine Hollow a few minutes ago. What's he doing here so late at night? I could ask you the same question. And so could Drew and Ethan. You're not gonna tell Ethan I was in his stall, are you? I don't know. Come on, Red, please. I don't want him getting mad at me again. All right. I won't say anything this time. Thanks. You're the best. Come on. I'll give you a lift home. <laughs> the lounge. Do you want me to get you one? No, thanks. This place is a mess. Mm, does look messier than normal. That's because things aren't normal. Yeah, everything's up in the air. And the fact that now Mr. D'Angelo is here, everything's about money instead of horses and Max being overseas. Things will pick up soon. You'll see. I don't know whether I'm prepared to wait. What do you mean? I've been offered a job at another stables. But Red, you can't leave. You belong here. I used to think that, but now I doubt if anyone would even notice I was gone. I'd miss you heaps. Thanks, Christy. But Veronica would be glad if I left, and I might just do that. Veronica, I want you to leave Red alone. But what did he tell you I've done? He didn't say anything. I've seen the way you treat him. Christy, you're upset. Not as upset as I will be if you make Red go to another stables. Well, well, that's up to him. If Red leaves, Veronica, I will never speak to you again. You didn't see him. It was like he was a totally different horse. What do you mean? It's hard to explain. It was like he was spooked, except way worse. I was sure he was going to trample me. And when I touched him, his heart was beating so fast. It was faster than, well, than wind song. That's awful. What if he's sick or something? Uh, newsflash, Lisa. He's a racehorse. Being temperamental is what they do. I don't know, Stevie. I've worked with racehorses, and I know what they're like. This was different. You have to admit, it is kind of weird that Mr. D'Angelo was hanging around Winsong's stall. What do you think he was doing? I don't know. But I do know something strange is going on, and I'm going to find out what it is. Veronica, wait up. What is it? It's for you. Marked urgent. intercom system I had installed. I've already paid this. Are you sure? Uh, I'm not an idiot. Oh, look, the check's right here. There's your problem. Your check bounced. What? That, that's impossible. Somebody must have screwed up. That's too bad. But if I don't get this fixed, they're going to take my intercom system away. What should I do? How should I know? You're the executive. <laughs> Oh. 
We need to talk. Oh, no kidding. I don't know what you're paying your accountant, but whatever it is, it's too much. You have to fire him. What are you talking about? Well, what sort of a loser could screw up so much that one of our checks could bounce? Bounced? Like a little rubber ball. I'm so embarrassed, Daddy. You have to call the intercom people and explain. No, I'm not going to call anyone. Oh, Daddy, you don't expect me to do it. I mean, I'm just the executive student president. It's not really my job. Veronica, sweetie. Here. You can use this phone. Veronica, you must listen to me. <laughs> Whatever it is, can't it wait? I mean, I, I, I've ordered some riding outfits and I have to go and pick them up. And... No, it can't wait. It's very important. It concerns you and me and Winsong. Well, what's going on? That check didn't bounce because of any accountant. It bounced because things are tight now. How? I made a few bad investments. Oh, well, well, that's too bad. Uh, but, it, but it happens all the time, right? I, I mean... I mean, you're always telling me how investing's a gamble and you have to take the losses with the gains. Yes, that's true. However, unfortunately, the stock market is down. And I overextended myself when I invested in Pine Hollow and that racehorse. So, so cash some of our stocks or something. We have lots of money, Daddy. Don't we? No. That's what I've been trying to tell you. We've lost almost everything. <gasps> oh, no! No, this, this can't be happening to me. Um, there's got to be something you can do. Well, there's one last hope. If Winsong can win the Bridgemont Cup, then we could sell him for a tidy profit. And uh, we'll be all right until the stock market rises again. You're going to sell him? I'm sorry, darling, we don't have a choice. <sighs> and what if he loses? Well, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that that doesn't happen. I never thought I'd say this, but can we stop reading about horses now, please? Might as well. I haven't found anything that would explain Winsong's behavior. The problem is, his symptoms are so vague, anything could be wrong. Maybe the problem is there's no problem. Then how would you explain his change in appetite, the hives, and the aggressiveness? Maybe he was aggressive because the hives were bothering him. Remember when I had the measles? I was so grumpy, I almost bit my brother's head off. Your brother? I brought over some soup and I barely made it out alive. My point is, if there was really something wrong with Winsong, either Ethan or Mr. D'Angelo would have done something about it by now. I guess. I'm sorry, did you mean, thanks, Stevie? You're right as always? I know what you're saying makes sense, but there's something not right, I can feel it. But you can't prove it. You haven't even seen Winsong since last night. Maybe he's calmed down. You're right. Uh, I love hearing those words. Where are you going? To Winsong's stall. But you just said maybe he's calmed down. Yeah, that's right. Maybe. So I'm gonna go check on him and take a look for myself. Look at him. The hives are getting worse. Poor guy. No wonder he's been acting up. I thought Ethan said he was going to do something about this. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I'll find out. I promise. You guys, you'll never guess. Mr. D'Angelo is going broke. No way! Even Veronica couldn't spend all their money. It's true. He said that Winsong's their last hope. They need him to win the cup so they can sell him for way more money. I figures that D'Angelo would see a beautiful horse like Winsong as an investment. What are they going to do with him if he loses? 
Maybe he's doing something to Winsong to make sure he doesn't lose. Red's thinking of taking another job because he doesn't feel appreciated around here. But we love him. <laughs> That's why I'm putting together this videotape. To show him how much he'd be missed if he left Pine Hollow. That's a great idea. Okay, so what would you miss most if he left Pine Hollow? If Red left, I'd miss the way he helps me take up my horse. Good. What else? Are you okay, Veronica? You, you upset about something or? Huh? Has something bad happened? Oh, it's much worse than bad. It's. It's the end. Can I ask what it is? Oh, you'll find out anyway. The D'Angelo's are near enough to broke. Oh, it's only money. It's a lot of money. What I mean is, nobody's hurt or killed, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> only somebody who's never had money would say that. Oh, money's good, don't get me wrong. But it's who you are that matters, not what you've got. But that's exactly what makes me who I am. Without money, I'd be like everybody else. I'd be ordinary, like the Saddle Club. I'd still like it, rich or poor. You might, Scooter, but the people who matter wouldn't. <laughs> and who are these people that matter, exactly? The people with money. Oh, and they'll turn their backs on you because you haven't got it. Well, they'd have to, because then I wouldn't be one of them. Hmm. See, you're not talking about people that matter. You're talking about morons. It's not what you've got in your pocket that matters. It's what you've got in here. And I'll tell you another thing. That drink is on the house. Don't you see? It all makes sense. The change in appetite, dehydration, aggression, not to mention the fact that Winsong suddenly got so strong and fast. I know Mr. D'Angelo isn't big on horses, but he wouldn't try and hurt Winsong. But he is desperate. If he doesn't make a lot of money fast, he'll lose everything. Winsong's his only hope. So, to make sure he wins, he's given Winsong something to make him perform better. Oh, Winsong. But we won't know for sure until we get him checked out by Dr. Judy. We can't call her. She won't even look at Winsong without Mr. D'Angelo's permission. If he's doing something wrong, then there's no way he'll let a vet anywhere near Winsong. Where are you going? I can't just let him suffer like this. If we can't call Dr. Judy, I'm at least gonna go talk to Ethan. Okay, we've got to catch Mr. D'Angelo in the act. But how? Screw is good at camera stuff, isn't he? Why? <laughs> Ethan, can I talk to you? What's up? I don't know for sure, but I think Mr. D'Angelo has been doing something to win song. That's a serious accusation. I know, but it explains win song's strange behavior. What strange behavior? You know, the mood, the energy, the appetite swings. It all points to. I don't need a lesson on how to take care of a horse, Carol. Win song's perfectly healthy. His appetite's back and he's faster and stronger than ever. What about the hives? The hives are just stress-related. Sometimes they happen before a big race. It wouldn't hurt to call that, just in case. I appreciate your concern, but Mr. D'Angelo couldn't be giving him anything. If he had, I'd know. Winsong's fine. Trust me.
great, but it'll look even better without you in the picture. Do you think it'll work? It has to. We're running out of time. And so is Winsong. Well, we're all set. Now all we have to do is wait. Where's Carol? She should be here by now. I hope she brings us some food. I'm star... Hey, what's wrong with Winsong? Looks like he's having trouble breathing. Dr. Judy! I know you said we should wait for Veronica's dad's permission, but... Winsong can't breathe. You've got to help him. What's wrong with him? He's going into anaphylactic shock. What will happen to him? I have to open his airway. Why don't you girls wait outside? We can't leave him! Now! Think he'll be okay? He has to be. What's going on here? When someone's having trouble breathing. Dr. Judy said he was going into Anna... Anna... Anaphylactic shock? What? Is he all right? He'll be fine, but he's had a severe allergic reaction to something. What did you give him? The only thing this horse has ingested is whatever homeopathic nonsense Ethan's been giving him. I've been monitoring him closely. There were no signs of trouble before now. Oh, really? And how long has he been covered in hives? A day. Two at the most. Three. And he's been getting worse. You do know that horses can have severe allergic reactions to herbal remedies. Yes, but I just thought... You that... should have called a vet as soon as you noticed the hives. You've seriously damaged this horse. I was doing my best. I didn't think the allergy was that serious. Wait, you knew he was having allergic reactions and you kept giving him herbal remedies? Well, I had no choice. You pressured me to produce a winner. I told you there wasn't time, but you wouldn't listen. So I gave Winsong something to perk him up and make him eat. Is that so bad? Well, it is when your cure makes the horse sick. I must say I'm very surprised. I knew your father. I expected more from you. I can't believe you're leaving. I'm really going to miss you. We all will. <coughs> Winsong is still my horse, you know. No, he's not, sweetie. We can't afford to keep him. I hope he's going to a good home. He is. Well, at least we have money now, right? A and maybe a new riding outfit will help cheer me up. What was that, like, three seconds of grief? <laughs> There'll be no new outfits for quite a while. But you said we'd be OK once we sold Winsong. If we sold him for a profit, but since he was in no shape to race, I barely broke even. In fact, I've spoken to Drew. I'm afraid I can't put any more money into Pine Hollow. You mean I'm no longer executive student president? I'm sorry, honey. Yes! Oh. Daddy! I hope this is important, because I really don't have time. It'll only take a minute. Please, Red. If Red left, I'd miss the way he helps me tank up my horse. Well, he gives Dan crunchies, and when he's around, Veronica is nice to us. Well, make that less mean than usual. We love you, Red! Goodness, what would I most miss about Red if he went away? I just couldn't imagine Pine Hollow without him, and, and I wouldn't want to either, no. That is, that is definitely far too upsetting. Is there anything else you want me to say, dear? Oh, no, that would be... Christy says you don't think that anyone would notice if you left Pine Hollow. But we would notice. You're like an honorary member of the Saddle Club. And we're not the only ones who would miss you. You tell them, guys. <laughs> You did all that for me. <laughs> so, will you stay? Well, I don't know. <laughs> of course I'll stay. How could I leave? Pine Hollow is my home.
Melanie, Tracy here is new to writing, but looking forward to it. <laughs> He's gonna love it here. Nice to meet you, Melanie. Uh, could you give Tracy a tour of the place? Yeah, it'd be fun. I'll start with the best part. I'll introduce you to the horses and the ponies. Looks like Stevie tried to groom my horse again. I had to brush out a huge tangle in his mane this morning all by myself. If someone's going to do something, she should at least do it right. That's what I always say. Then how come you did your buttons up wrong? Need your luck. I'll have to ask Drew to find me someone more responsible to groom my horse. You'll have to groom your own horse from now on. It, but my parents are paying you to do that. That's not the case anymore. Your father's trying to save money, so you'll have to pitch in. Are you telling me that I have to work? Just a few light stable chores. Oh. That's it. I'm ordinary. So, did you complain to Drew? We talked. And? I'm working in exchange for Garnet's board. Whoa. Why? I have no choice. I'd never agree to work to ride here. Say bye-bye to the rest of your life. Christy, you're so young and naive. You're forgetting the benefits of work. Benefits? <laughs> Are you feeling OK? Well, there's a certain satisfaction a person gets when she pays her own way in this world. It's called independence. You've obviously been brainwashed by your father. Because the truth is, Veronica, nobody really wants to work. You wanted to see me? Yes, Stevie. I need a favour. You know I'm always happy to help, Drew. Now, I know you might not be interested, but I could really use a hand. I want you to watch out for Veronica. Be a supervisor of sorts. Look, now, I know you guys don't always get along, but I need somebody who knows how to do the stable work properly. Red doesn't have the time to show around. So, will you do it for me? Sure, Drew. No problem. Where would you like us to start? You ought to be the responsible one now, Stevie. I know, Drew. You can relax. I'll do my best. Thanks. I'll talk to Veronica. Let her know you're in charge. I'm in charge. Yes. And this is the tack room. As you can see, we have a wide variety of tack. I can go over it if you like. I know this like the back of my hand. Bridles, bits, and the saddles are just over here. Now, every horse has its own saddle, and their marks are hey. get them. I really like your jacket. Where'd you get it? A very wealthy friend of mine gave it to me just before she went bust. Cool. Let's get out of here. There's much more of Pine Hollow to see. I've put the horses away. I've washed the ponies. What am I doing now? It's time to clear the stalls. OK, we'll start by mucking up these stalls. It's part of your duties, Veronica. But why does she have to tell me what to do? Stevie's your supervisor now. She'll show you what needs to be done and help you learn how to do them. Mucking out stalls is one of the duties you'll do twice daily. Once when you get here and then before you leave. That sounds excessive. So, what do I do with it? Pick up the muck with the pitchfork and put it in the wheelbarrow. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sure you are. Oh. You'll have to learn how to aim a little bit better, Veronica. Oh, I agree. This is not going to be easy. You seem to be getting the hang of it now. Veronica, where are you going? You haven't finished. It's none of your business. I am your supervisor. 
I'm going to the bathroom. I guess I can't stop you from following me, but there are some things that need to be done alone. Your new look is, uh, unique. Yeah, unique. Oh, how did this happen? Must have been that independent woman you're seeking. Very funny. Too bad you're up to your eyebrows, innit? There's this awesome sale on at the mall. 30% off designer labels. But I guess you can't make it. Hey, don't be silly. I can leave work anytime I want to. I'm not a slave. Mum's got the car outside. Just give me a minute to get changed. I can ride with no hands too. Want to see? can really ride that horse. It's just a pony. She's still good. Hey, do you like shopping? Are you kidding? I love shopping. Good. My mum's coming to pick me up soon and you can come to the mall with us if you like. I'll call my mum and ask. <laughs> Looks like you had a busy afternoon. Drew, my absence was unavoidable. The designer sales only happen once a year. But now I'm back and ready to work, so I'll just get changed into some other clothes. Veronica, in future you'll let Stevie know when you finished your work. You know what? I don't need to take this. Forget having to work. I've got other ways of making money. I've been meaning to sell garnet soon anyway. Sell garnet? You can't do that. What other choice do I have? I've got to make her see sense. Why should we get involved? If not for Veronica, we should do it for Garnet. She's happy here. Well, I'd better stay out of it. She always does the opposite of what I say. You should talk to Elisa. She quite likes you. <laughs> She's got a funny way of showing it. Hey, hold still. I don't want you to make it any more difficult for me than it already is. You know I'm not meant for this kind of manual labour. <laughs> <laughs> You're so silly. Hey. I can't believe you would even think about selling Garnet. You two obviously love each other. I like Garnet very much, but love, that's a bit extreme. You won't be able to live with yourself if you do, Veronica. Well, horses are bought and sold all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. It's what horse people do. <sighs> Saying goodbye to a horse is not an easy thing to do. It's like losing a part of yourself. Don't worry. My father will buy me a new, better horse once he bounces back from his business problems. <sighs> if you were my horse, I'd never sell you. Hey, please, leave her alone. She needs to look her best for her buyers. <sighs> Who would have thought that selling a horse would be such a huge task? I think you're making it harder than it has to be. Oh, uh, no way. I'm only doing this to avoid working. I've already seen ten people about Garnet today alone. I know. You act like you're selling her, but you've turned down every offer to buy her. Your point is? Well, it seems like you really don't want to sell her. Uh, well, I don't intend to sell Garnet to just anyone. I need to make sure that her next home will be up to her standards. And that I get the best price for her. She is a model thoroughbred, after all. Well, just remember, you don't have to sell her. You can always keep working on at the stables. Daddy, I want you to call back the highest bidder and accept his offer to buy Garnet. Veronica, you're making a big mistake. Can't you see them on the phone? Yeah, yeah but you and Garnet were made for each other. You can't replace her. You can't see it, but we can. 
Daddy, I'm going to have to call you back later. I've got somebody bothering me. You can save the lecture. Your pal Lisa already gave me that sermon. But did she tell you that working at the stables isn't all that bad? It can even be fun when you're working with your friends. So you really don't have to sell garnet. Why are you being so nice to me all of a sudden? I feel sorry for you. Oh, don't bother. But you're going through a tough time right now. It must be hard to know what the right thing to do is. I'm managing very well, thank you. Hey, Melanie. Want to go on a hack together? You should ask the new girl to come too. Sorry, I can't. I've already got plans for this afternoon. Maybe some other time. So, can you come? Change your plans. Mum's taking me and some of my friends to the Sweetwater Fun Park. Oh, what about the mall? Park's way better. So, do you want me to come? I do, but there's not enough room in the car. Oh, sorry. You're really great. I'm gonna miss you. Your new owner is a very lucky person. I can't be here when she comes to pick you up. So I've got things to do, so I'll say goodbye now. Great life, God. I really do. Be safe always. <laughs> Poor Veronica's taking the sale of Garnet very much to heart, isn't she? Let's face it, Annie Liz. We won't be far behind her. We'll have to sell our horses too. Oh, Drew, has it come to that? There's a lot of people we owe money to. Can't let them down. And the banks? You know the banks. Won't lend you an umbrella on a rainy day, but throw them at you when it's fine. I take it that means we can't refinance. I've tried everything. I don't know, maybe Max can think of something. If he gets here in time. He's waitlisted on the next available flight. What a gloomy homecoming for him. No, you did everything that could be done. Ashley, how about the two of us go on a hack? What happened to your other plans? Well, they fell through. I've got the tack ready. Sorry, now I've got other plans. And you know, we go to all the trouble of tacking up and Tracy would just waltz in and you dump me. Sorry, Veronica. Yeah, same here. No, I mean, I'm sorry about all the rubbish I talked about work being beneath us. You know, it's funny. It wasn't until I started to take care of Garnet by myself that I realised how much I loved her. When I was just riding her and not taking care of her, I, I took her for granted. Yeah, I realised something too. I really, really like Red, and he mucks out stalls for a living. 
My whole attitude about work is way out of line. I guess we've both been pretty stupid. Tell you something else. Scooter works for his living as a waiter. He's a really good friend to you. You're lucky to have him. Can't stand to watch Veronica mope around the stables anymore. I thought I'd enjoy to see her suffer, but this is depressing. I miss Garnet too. We have to do something. The only thing that's gonna cheer her up is by getting Garnet back. So that's what we'll do. It's not gonna be that easy. The new owners don't wanna sell her. She's a top-notch horse, so they're not gonna let her go easily. Unless they get more for her than they paid. That's not gonna happen. What if Garnet wasn't a top-notch horse? What if something was wrong with her? Garnet's in top physical condition. A horse's condition can change like that. What do you mean? I'm sure it's not the end of the world, Melanie. Yes, it is. I don't have any friends. Oh, I thought you and Ashley were quite tight. Ashley's mad at me. Did you do something to make her mad? Um, yeah. I wasn't very nice to her. Mm. Tell her you're sorry. That usually does the trick. If she'll talk to me. Mm. Oh, hi, Veronica. What'll it be? Uh, actually, I've come to talk to you. Ah, uh, well, step into my office. Scooter, I've been very stupid. Well, that's something I know quite a lot about. I've sold Garnet. And I know I've done the wrong thing. It's, it's like I've lost a friend. Can you not try to get her back? Oh, no, my father offered to buy her back from the new owners, but oh, no luck. I, I shouldn't have done it. If there's nothing you can do about it, you've just got to move on. But, uh, I betrayed her, and, and she's always been so faithful to me. Don't beat yourself up, Veronica. It's not going to help. I'll, I'll never forgive myself. I just can't. Of course you can. You're too strong to give in to this. You always make me feel better, Scooter. Do I now? Well, how about that? So good to see you again, Max. Oh, same here, Mum. Welcome home, Max. It's good to be back. I wish you were under happier circumstances. Oh, well, we're still alive and we're still a family, right? That's the spirit. I'm sorry I couldn't have done more to save one hollow. Oh, look, you gave it your best shot, Drew. Now I'll give it mine, and if that doesn't work, well, we'll just have to bow to the inevitable. The world will keep on spinning, right? <laughs> I used to look after Garnet back at Pine Hollow. This one is Garnet's favorite. I thought she might be missing it today. What's it for? Oh, she only needs it on cloudy days. Garnet has a better run if you warm up her hip for about 20 minutes before you ride. What's wrong with her hip? Uh, did the D'Angelo's not mention it? Mention what? It must have slipped their minds. <laughs> the problem isn't that serious. That's right, you just need to nurse it along. Take it nice and easy. I don't like what I'm hearing here. Did we say something we shouldn't have? No, young lady, I think you girls just did me a big favor. I'm gonna give Mr. D'Angelo a call. You don't have to leave Pine Hollow because you don't have a horse here. You can ride the school horses. You can ride back. Christy, I can't. 
just too hard for me to be here right now with so many reminders of Garnet everywhere. You see, I'm even hearing her whinny. I must be going crazy. Veronica, I heard it too. It's Garnet. Oh, she's back. Oh, Garnet. Oh, I missed you so much. Did you guys do this? It was Stevie's idea. And your dad returned the check. Which he did in a flash. Thanks, Stevie. It was a really good idea of yours. That's fine. Actually, Garnet Stall could do with a clean Veronica. I'll get onto it straight away. I'll help. <laughs> Ashley? I'm sorry I didn't go on the hack when you asked me to and wasted my time with Tracy. You wanted your new friend to yourself. I was jealous. I thought Tracy liked you better than me. Even if she did, you and I could still be friends. It wouldn't change anything between us. I know that now. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Pretty please? Pretty please. With cherries on top? With cherries and crushed nuts on top. <laughs> Drew, Mrs Reg and I have tried everything, but I'm afraid we haven't been able to turn the situation around. But can't you just get another loan? Oh, well, I'm afraid that's the problem, Carol. We have too many loans as it is. So there's nothing anybody can do? It's too late. What we have to do is, is try to keep our spirits up. Look, it's a, it's a terrible blow, but we're all in one piece. We'll get over this somehow, and we'll, we'll find another place, eventually. How long have we got, Max? Three weeks at best, but uh, there is a chance the mortgagee will want to move in before that. What a pleasant surprise. I suppose you've heard. Yeah, I have. Sad. Yeah. Will you, uh, you know, stick around if Pine Hollow closes? Oh, I, I don't know. Um, I'm thinking of going back to Ireland to see my family. Oh. You never talk about your family. Well, there's not much to tell. A pretty run of the mill. Two parents, one of either sex, and a brother and sister. What sort of work does your father do? Oh, he doesn't work. Oh, he's on welfare. Actually, um, <clears throat> here's a photo of my mother and father. Your mother is a gardener? Well, more like a weeder, she says. You know, the, the kids at the stables will miss you. A lot. Do you want to go on a picnic with me, Veronica? We've got to try and raise money somehow. But isn't it thousands and thousands they need? At least. I'll go mad just sitting and waiting for the end. <laughs> what about holding a big sale of stuff? A big sale? Yeah, a rummage sale. There's tons of stuff around we could sell for money. <gasps> the old barn. There's lots of cast-offs and junk in there. Hi, Christy. Red. It's a bit of a shock for all of us. Red, I'll miss you. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
this brings back memories. Look at all these old books. <laughs> Max's great-grandfather was a mad, keen collector. He could never say no to anything old or interesting. Mm. There must be hundreds. It's good of you girls to go to so much trouble, but I'm afraid it won't save us from the banks. But we will make something, even if it's not very much. And it'll help you and Max set up somewhere else. It's no trouble doing something for you. You've done so much for us. Could you girls promise me something? Sure. What is it? Well, Pine Hollow's days may be over. But don't let the Saddle Club die. Never. We won't. The Saddle Club forever. <laughs> That's my girls. You okay? Terrible. It's not the end of the world, Christy. Isn't it? Some good things may come out of this. Like what? Well, maybe it's time for a change. You were probably getting too close to Red. What do you mean? You know what I mean. He's not very suitable. He suits me fine. You have let your standards slip very badly. You're going to wind up a very lonely old woman. I don't think so. Don't bet on it. Somebody nice will come along and you won't even notice. Because you've got your standards. Do you reckon this is what growing up is like? The fun stops? I hope not. That means getting older really sucks. What are you guys doing? We're going to sell all this stuff and give the money to the Regnaries. Where'd you get all this? Max's great-grandfather loved hoarding stuff. <laughs> Actually, we're doing something too. We're going to make a videotape for Max and Mrs. Reg to remember Pine Hollow by. That's sweet. Make sure you don't leave that lying around anywhere. Everything comes back here before the sale. OK, bossy. <laughs> wow. Look at this. This is so old. <laughs> it seems too good to sell at a rummage sale. We should have it properly valued. Mm. I'm going to miss this place. We're still OK, aren't we? Me and you? Because I really like you. Yeah. I just wish things could stay the way they were. We just found it in an old trunk. Well, let me see it. <clears throat> um, have you got everything you want, Carol? Thanks, Guga. OK. So, what do you think? Well, it is 19th century, but it was a popular edition. Is that good or bad? It simply means it's not rare, and it's the rarity of a book which gives it its value. So how much is it worth? 80 to 100 dollars. Oh, I thought it'd be worth a lot more than that. Well, I could stretch that to 120 dollars. Look, thanks for the trouble, but I'll have to ask my partners whether we can accept this. Do you have any other volumes at Pine Hollow you might like me to value? Stop by tomorrow. You can look over the other books, and I'll give you an answer on this. Splendid. See you tomorrow. I've got some bad news, Lisa. I've got a buyer lined up for Prancer. 
Drew, why? I was offered a sum for all the school horses, together, as a lot. If I split them up, the buyer isn't interested. I've ridden Prancer for two years. We're buddies. We look after each other. If there was any other way I could do this, I would. Believe me. Oh, hey. Hi. You collect stamps, don't you? Yeah, I do. How do you find out how much a stamp is worth? I'll miss you for as long as I live, Prancer. <laughs> oh, Prancer, I'll never forget you. <laughs> Heard. We're so sorry. What am I gonna do? <laughs> what are you smiling at? I can't believe you came out with me. Yeah. I'm a bit shocked myself. <laughs> We've got such different outlooks. Yeah. Money's not important to you, is it? Ah, love over gold. What does that mean? Like my mother says, love is better than money. Love over gold, Veronica. It's gotta be, don't you think? I, I don't know. Do you want a dip? A what? Do you want to go for a swim? Of course not. I haven't got my costume. I asked you to get wet. Now go to the ball. Come on. Don't you dare. Oh, Stop it. <laughs> Don't. No. Oh, no, please. Stop Come it. On. No. Scoot uh, Monica. Uh. Uh. <laughs> you are so... Stupid. <laughs> There's no help for it. That's the way I was born. <laughs> well, kiss me, stupid. No. I won't kiss you, stupid. But I will kiss you. Veronica! I uh, got the stamp catalogue you wanted. Oh, there's so many of them! Yeah, there's over 10,000 entries. for a hack to say goodbye to the trails? Just leave her. We're not up to her standards.
Hey guys, let's have a circle hug. We all look so miserable. This is really nice. Go on, Christy. Come on, Christy. Hi, Carol. Have you seen Veronica? Uh, no, she left in a half. Ah, she's a deep one, that girl. Oh, that's a pretty old book you got there. Yeah, I was hoping it was valuable. Does it look valuable to you? What? Not my field, I'm afraid. But why don't you go online and put it up for auction? Then you'll find out exactly how much it's worth. Say what? Come on, I'll show you. Everyone here is so horrible to me. Except you. <laughs> well, looks like the Saddle Club have finally got their own way. Turning Christy against me, like they've always wanted to. If I sell that stamp, I'll be able to buy my own stables. And I can choose who can join and who can't. I may let the Saddle Club join if they beg me. But I don't think I'll ever let Christy join. <laughs> How much for the specimens? Oh, ten dollars or the nearest offer. Fair enough. Oh, hi. I met Carol yesterday. I'm the dealer. She said you've got some books for sale. You want books? You've come to the right place. Right, we've fed in all the info, so now we just sit back and wait. <laughs> You're not just a pretty face, are you, Scooter? Oh, I'm a pretty face as well. Will you be long? This is important, so you guys better wait. Wow. Look at that. How many zeros is that? And you tell me not to leave books lying around. And there's another one. <sighs> oh, now that's more like it. I'm prepared to pay $250 for that volume. $250. Maybe we should wait till Carol gets back. Look, it's double what I offered her yesterday, and I am in rather a hurry. $250. Take it or leave it. $8,000? I'd accept it. Where's the Atlas? How could you go wrong? Okay, it's a deal. Stop! Don't sell it! That book is worth $8,000. It seems to me I'm wasting my time here with you children. I found the stamp. If they found it, they wouldn't share it with me. Always leaving me out. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. And with all that money, I won't need friends. Love over gold, Veronica. It's gotta be. Don't you think? think, think. $8,000, that is fantastic. Is that enough to save Pine Hollow? 
Bless you, dear. We need more than that, but it'll go towards paying the traders in town. Well done, Carol. It was Scooter's idea. He's <laughs> a smart guy. Oh, it's an Irish thing. <laughs> Max, what's wrong? I just had a call from the bailiff. They just received the court order they've been after. Are we here to chain up the gates before nightfall? Oh, that is awful. Chain up the gates? Can I do that? I'm sorry, everybody. We fought the good fight, but this is the end for Pine Hollow. It's all over. No, Max. It's not all over yet. Phil, is this a bourbon coat of arms? Wow. Yeah, it is the bourbon coat of arms. It's worth squillions. Well, well whose is it? It's your great-grandfather's. Good old Gramps. <laughs> hey, everyone. Pale Hollow is saved. It's great. Well done, Monica. No, no. Who's the grandpa's <laughs> You're a hero. <laughs> Come on, Monica. Good job. Oh, Monica. Yes. 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 Come on. Monica, you're a champion. <laughs> 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 Veronica, I rang me folks. They'd like to meet you. They've invited us to Ireland for the holidays. Oh, but, uh, will, will there be enough room? Well, there's 50 of them. What? You saw how big our house is in the photo. That's your house? One of them, yeah. <laughs> but you said your father was unemployed. Uh, no. He doesn't have to work. He owns half of Dublin. Half of Dublin? Well, it's not a very big city. Uh, are you rich, Scooter? Now that I have you, I am. Juvenile. Bit cute. In an annoying way. There's a sale on at the mall, you know. <laughs> really? 50% off. Well, what are we waiting for? Who won? We all did. Saddle Club Forever. 